is Jehovah Jireh Bible Church. I'm your lead servant pastor, Andre Andrews. It is truly an honor and a pleasure to welcome you into this virtual sanctuary this morning. Three quick things before we get started. If you hit the like, share, and subscribe button, it would be greatly appreciated. Uh, by liking, sharing, and subscribing, we move the algorithm that we, uh, that more views of this, uh, of this content uh, page, um, this virtual sanctuary can be exposed to many others, and with doing so, we can advance the kingdom of God with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, thank you again in advance for liking, sharing, and subscribing. Um, this morning, I'd like us to get started with uh, with prayer to set the tone, the atmosphere for the Holy Spirit to uh, speak to our hearts this morning, speak to our minds uh, that they're be transformation within us so let us pray eternal master we thank you oh god we thank you for this is the day that you have made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it lord i pray for those who are sick those who are shut in those who are uh downtrodden today lord those who can't get to the physical sanctuary lord so thank you for this uh this ministry this this avenue in order to share your gospel for the advancement of your kingdom, Lord. For those who are sick and those that are uh, shut in, Lord, I, I pray that you would just touch them, Lord. I, I pray a special prayer for uh, Sister Sullivan, Lord, that uh, she uh, she's dealing with some health concerns. So, Lord, if you would just come in, Lord, and touch her, Lord. I, um, I pray for my own mother, Lord, that you would... Uh, uh, send healing ministry uh, to her, Lord, uh, by the hem of your garment, Lord, that just a, that it's more medicine in the hem of your garment than the entire medical system, Lord. So we just pray that you just continuously be God. And you have you have shown up and shown out in our lives on, on so many occasions, Lord, that we can't number. If I had 10,000 tons, I could not thank you enough for what you have already done, Lord. I'd like to pray also for my mother-in-law, Lord, a special shout out for her this morning, Lord, uh, for, for continuously uh, giving her another year of life, Lord, uh, even through all the uh, sickness and affliction, Lord, you've still been working with her, Lord. Lord, you've been working with me, Lord, and with my uh, physical illness, Lord, so we just, we're just thankful this morning, Lord, even though we may be going through our trials, uh, entering a trial or coming out of a trial, Lord, you have always been faithful. You are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Lord, I just thank you for it, Lord. I decrease as you increase, Lord. I just stand before you, Lord, in, in, in total surrender, Lord, and humility, Lord, for you are such a great, great God, such a huge God that can do anything but fail, Lord. So we're going to trust in you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, this morning, we're going to be reading out of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and we're going to read verses 3 through uh, 6. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 through 7. Three through seven. Yeah, Second Corinthians chapter chapter four, verses three through seven. I'm going to be reading out of the NIV version of Scripture. If you have your Bibles with you or your tablets, please turn to Second Corinthians chapter four, verses three through seven. I have a mantra that I do before every preaching moment. If you would raise your Bibles above your heads and repeat after me: Living water, living water, fill us till we thirst no more. And again, our scripture is coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 through 7. And the scripture reads as follows. Uh, the God of this age has, no, I'm sorry. Uh, and even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. 
Uh, for God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine on our hearts to give us light to the knowledge of, the glo of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in, in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. May you have been blessed by the hearing and the reading of the word of God. This power is not from us, but from God. For, for a subject title this morning, I like to talk about spiritual blindness. Spiritual blindness. Let us pray. Eternal Master, I thank you, O oh God. I thank you for this opportunity to handle your sacred oracles, for without you, I am truly nothing. I am thus before you, Lord. Lord, I am your humble servant, Lord. I decrease as you increase, Lord. Empty me of me. I stand before you as an empty vessel. Work in me and through me. Hide me behind Calvary's rugged cross. Holy Spirit, do the preaching, do the teaching. Lord, let your word go out and accomplish everything you intended for it to do. And it will not return unto you void, but it will accomplish everything you intended to do. Lord, guide my words, Lord. Guard my heart as well as my mind, Lord. Give me power from on high, Lord, because I know only the anointing and the power of the gospel and your word comes from you. So, Lord, work in me and through me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Spiritual blindness. Spiritual blindness happens uh, to many people. Spiritual blindness is a form of deception. We deceive ourselves much. As Jeremiah said that the heart is wicked, is deceitful above all things. But who can know it but God? So often, spiritual blindness is uh, is prevalent in the unbeliever, but also in the believer at times. Uh, so we're going to dive into what Paul is talking about in Second Corinthians chapter four, verses three through seven, to uh, unpack spiritual blindness. Why is it that some people are opposed to the gospel? And why are some some people whose lifestyle is unscriptural cannot understand the rejection of their disobedience before Almighty God? And how is it that some people can criticize the Word of God and its origin and its authenticity? Well, the answer to those questions is very simple. It's called spiritual blindness. Spiritual blindness is a very dangerous condition. It's a very, very dangerous condition for anyone to, to, to be under this, uh, this diagnosis. In 1 John chapter 2 and 11, the scripture reads as follows. But anyone who hates a brother or sister is in darkness and walks around in darkness. They do not know where they are going because the darkness has blinded them. The darkness has blinded them. He says that those who are spiritually blind do not know where they are going. They think they know, but they do not. Spiritual blindness is the inability of a person to understand, to perceive, or to grasp, or to comprehend spiritual truth. They may be fully aware or fully capable to understand some facts. Many things in life are true, but a spiritual blind person is incapable of digesting or comprehending or perceiving the true meaning of spiritual uh, spirituality, the word, the inerrancy of God's word, they're, they're enabled to perceive the truth of God's word. Now, 
Paul, as we dive into to the text, Paul had uh, a few things to to point out within the the spiritual uh, blindness. Paul talks about uh, the origin of spiritual blindness in 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. Uh, the one who is blinded, as Paul, Paul talks about, the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel. The one who is blinded is Satan himself. Paul describes him as the God, little g, uh, 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 who, who claims to be the God of this world, meaning the God of this age, the God of this world system the, 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 uh, that we live in, our religious systems, our economic systems, our political systems, the system that makes us part of this life. Paul says that Satan has 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 set him set set out to blind the minds of unbelievers. His, his his ultimate goal is to blind people from the light of the gospel. And in, in order to keep them from Christ, Second Corinthians eleven and three, Paul describes Satan as a, a crafty deliverer. <laughs> A uh, crafty deceiver, excuse me. Uh, Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So what, what Paul is, is communicating in, in this scripture, Satan does not present himself as the scary boogeyman that most people think of. Satan presents himself stealth and crafty. He's subtle than all the beasts of the field. He comes alongside as, as, as a friend or, or, some, uh, or some false religious leader or someone that befriends you with, with false doctrine or misleading doctrines that will lead you to hell. See, Satan is very crafty and very, very, very still for how he does things. Yet Paul says he, he appears as an angel of light. Satan's objective and stated in, in, in verse four of our text is this. He wants to blind men's minds so they will not be able to come to the right conclusion about spiritual things. If Satan clouds your mind, you cannot see the beauty of the gospel and not only see the beauty of the gospel, you can't see the authenticity, the authentic Christ. You will have an antichrist, a misleading Christ, but not the true Christ that is displayed within scripture. See, spiritual blindness is detrimental to, to men, to women, to, to, to the body of Christ as well as the world. See, they, they can't grasp and understand the, the illumination of the gospel. Satan's ultimate goal is to take you off course. The, the, the truth Satan wants to hide, hide from man is, is this. He wants to hide the truth so that they are impossible or, or, or impossible for people to perceive the fact that they are lost. Satan wants to deceive you. He wants to distract you. He wants you to believe if you're if if you unsaved, he wants you to believe that you're in right standing with God, or he wants to put another false narrative that there's not a God in order for you to just keep going through life, living, living, in, living out of fellowship with God. Because to, to, this is the thing, saints. You've got to remember that this is a, a tried and convicted felon in the spiritual world. Satan has a sentence that will not be changed and it is coming quickly that he will be sentenced to an eternal fire. And if you don't uh, uh, come to grips or come to the realization that Christ is the only way, you will also have this sentence along with Christ. And God never intended for his creation to go along with this rebel from heaven. He, he never had an intention for you to be like Satan or to follow in his ways. He wants to blind you. Secondly, he wants to blind, blind them from the whole meaning of the cross. 
the cross, the blood, all is all of this is meaningless to the believer. They 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 have no earthly idea that how how these holidays that they celebrate often have 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 uh, uh, resurrection Sunday Christmas all these things are wrapped up and tangled up in Christ but but it's used as these is is distracted with with paganism all these different things to not look at Christ truly the one who is the redeemer the one who is the savior the one who is the uh, redeemer of all see Satan is a crafty stealth deceiver. He is a con man. He was a liar from the beginning and the father of lies. Spiritual blindness is detrimental. Not only detrimental, Lord have mercy, it, it will destroy body and soul if you do not listen to what the word of God is saying. Satan always launches attacks on the word of God. As, as as its origin, it it is God breathed, meaning it, it 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 is inspired. It came from the mouth of God. How God breathed through some men and get and gave them the the inspired word of God. This is this is what 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 uh, the inerrancy of the word of God is. It's the authenticity of God's word. Spiritual blindness will have you off track. It will distract you. It will take you off, off course. All the things that we need to, to be effective in this life. And it comes to a point where people are so spiritually blinded. In Matthew 15 and 14, look at what the word of God says. It says, let them alone. They are blind guides. And if the blind lead the blind, both will fall into the pit. See, it's people that, that are not in tune with God, are distracted from the word of God, following behind false doctrine, falling, following behind wolves in sheep's clothing, and they're getting the wrong doctrines, they're getting the wrong word of God, they're getting falsehood, and they're falling into this, and they're under, under the, uh, the, the hypnosis of spiritual blindness. See, it's, it's many that can be actively in in. And, and going to church, uh, saying they're very religious, but no relationship truly with Christ. See, this this is Satan's ultimate goal. If he's if he's appearing as an angel of light, of course he's going to tell you things that sound biblical, but they they but they're adding to the word, subtracting to the word. They're deceiving you, and many just keep on in this in this course and thought and following behind that. See, in Revelations 3 and 17, for you say, I am rich, I have prospered, and I need nothing. Realizing that you are, are wretched, you are pitiful, are, are pitiful and poor and blind and naked. See, what, what this scripture is saying, that you don't realize your materialism, the things that, that you crave from this world has, has put scales of your eyes, has blinded you to the truth. And you, you, you go along through life and think that all these things are the things that matter. But there is an eternity after there. There is an invisible physical world that, that awaits each and every one of us after this life is over. Christ is the only way. There's no substitution. You, we can think that of these things in life are, are, are something great, but they're very temporal. There is eternity that is coming. Luke chapter 12 and verse 48. But the one who did not know and did what deserved the beating will receive a light beating. Everyone to whom much is given of him much will be required and from him to whom they entrusted much they will demand the more see we we, we got to understand listen we Christ did did much for us so there's much required from from us on this on this side of heaven acts chapter 26 and verse 18 to open their eyes so they may turn from the darkness of darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and may place and a place among those 
who are sanctified by faith in me. This is Jesus speaking. You to open their eyes so they may turn from the darkness to, to light and from, and from the power of Satan to God. And they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. See, we 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 have we have to we have to know there are ramifications for our lives and living in spiritual blindness. Ladies and gentlemen, listen, there is a remedy to spiritual blindness. There's only one way, there's only one truth, and there's only one life, and it's through the person of Jesus Christ. See, it, it, I, I I have to employ you. As much as you may be a skeptic, as much as you may be set in unbelief by Satan, the truth of the matter, ladies and gentlemen, there is one truth, it's one infallible truth. His name is Jesus. This is why on a Friday, on a hill called Golgotha, Jesus Christ was nailed to a cross. He was nailed to a cross. He was nailed to a cross and placed up high. He was placed up high because the scripture declared if Jesus would be lifted up, that he would draw all men onto him. He was pierced in his side and he dies. He dies for the remission of our sins. He lays in a broad tomb for three days and three nights. He gets up Sunday morning with all power in his hand. Power to take you from darkness to light. Power to remove the veil or the scales from your eyes. Power to take you from the separation from God into fellowship with God. Power to take you from 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 a from an orphan to an adopted child, Abba Father. You can now call God Papa God. I'm Pastor Andrews of Jehovah Jireh Bible Church. I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it.